I'll call the Dickinson County Commission to order. Please stand for the flag salute. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We have uh, two additions to our agenda today. Uh, first one is to re review and consider approval of the RAPS agreement for 2014 grant period. The second one is to review and consider amending fireworks resolutions to include the, an application. So I move that we approve the agenda with those two additions. Second. Been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> the consent agenda are the minutes of the June 6 work session and regular meeting. Fund expenditures of $208,353.87 and abatements of $287.22. And we'll the minutes of the fence viewing. And, and the minutes of the fence viewing. Move we approve the consent agenda and the minutes of the fence viewing. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Commissioner's comments and committee reports. Uh, Greg, do you have? Um, Why don't you report on the 911? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, we spoke earlier <laughs> at the uh, department head meetings about the 911. I uh, went out there about an hour and a half. Uh, Operation Lifesaver. Uh, the, the presenters, the man and woman, uh, he was an engineer and has been involved in uh, one step where he had a vehicle and, and, and the, the fatality stuff and you know some of the rules I didn't realize uh, the uh, railroad right away you know what you can be fined for and just putting a, a spike on a rail can cause a problem and stuff uh, but like I said I thought they did I wasn't there for the other day and a half but John said it was well attended, the 41, or 39 kids were there, I was there an hour and a half, were real attentive, did an excellent job of their attention span, and I got sixth graders. I uh, do have a notice that, uh, on the email, a uh, uh, problem with a uh, barking dog at, at 2444 uh, Jeep Road, and the dogs are at 2265 Jeep Road, so that's the only email we got over Okay, uh, I'm sure Tim's interested in how our fence brings the West meeting. Uh, as maybe some of you are not aware, we, the commissioners are the assigned persons to, uh, if there's a conflict between people with their partition fence between them and uh, we did have a request to go view a fence, and uh, it got rained out a couple times. We scheduled it, but last Tuesday we did uh, go view the fence with the people that uh, that were on both sides of that particular fence line, and uh, <clears throat> we actually asked them directly whether we couldn't have them give some suggestions on how this could be worked out and uh, luckily they both started talking on on what they thought they could do as far as improving this fence and uh, it uh, we kind of give them the the uh, you know, of, of the details of the law, and I kind of stated that they'd probably be more satisfied with them working it out than, than if Craig and I have made a decision because they might neither one agree with what we make a decision. So to their best interest, it was maybe for them to see if they couldn't decide. And luckily they both, I thought, stepped forward and, and agreed to details on what one party would do and what the other party would do and and so we we do have the minutes of that meeting 
and we're going to send it to them. And uh, like I say, I I, I think communications is, is the key to these type of situations, and I I really think that uh, like I say, it's to the best interest of of every person if they're going to do something that they might think could affect their neighbor to talk to them ahead of time before they go ahead and do it. And, uh, and I think this is this is where 99% or 100% of the things could be resolved if if they just communicate with each other like we did out there and, and uh, it, it seemed like I thought the meeting I was very well satisfied that they come to agreement and, and uh, so because of the, the fence, the particular right now is is adequate. Uh, they felt like to get till this fall when when the crops were harvested, and both of them were scheduled to be freed up to where they are going to work together on on getting this fence fixed. So uh, we just like I say, we'll send the minutes to them, and we do have record of what they agreed to. So. Uh, I don't, I think if, Brad, do you know whether we'd have to go back and check later when this is done? I guess it really, it's, we didn't have any action, so I don't see that we would have to. No, which is any requirement right. unless they come back and. So I, if they come back and, and say that it didn't get done and, and request another fence view, and then we'd have to. Assuming that would that, that, that be the only way to be if they have to I would like to say that I thought Jeff uh, Bathurst uh, kind of got the ball rolling to get both uh, Paul he, he's and a Shirley, Shirley, yep, for Paul Morris. I thought he really was instrumental, I think, in getting them to talk. And uh, like I say, I, I, I do want to thank both parties for uh, making the decision themselves on, on how to resolve this situation. So. It, uh, if there's a lesson learned, I, I think this is the lesson that you communicate with your neighbor and, and, and try to resolve these situations before they get to the point where you have to call Craig and I. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I also, like I said, on the 911, uh, John and, and uh, the people that were involved out there, I really want to thank them because it, it is something that our county does that not every county does, and it's a real education program for the for the kids involved in that. Yeah, John said it's the seventh grade year. They skipped one year due to the tornado, but, but it's, it's yeah, a, started yeah. in 2006. And, yeah, yeah, they and, skipped the uh, tornado year in town. And then they combined that year. They didn't yeah. get to go with the following year, so. Mm -hmm. The Camp 91 program has been a really positive one, and we do get a lot of good support from the community by way of donations. Yeah, it's so all funded by donations. Yeah, no cost to the county. Uh, I, we do have a list of the people that, that donated uh, money or gift cards or uh, food or whatever food. the case may be. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, that, it's really good community support. It looks like there's over two thousand dollars donated for that program, and and uh, John did mention in our department head meeting this morning that uh, the program was fully funded by the donations, and that none of the money was none of the county money was used for it. So it's nice when you have those kind of programs that that. Uh, We've got just a couple of minutes. Uh, why don't we just get our signatures here? And
lots of those. Uh, <clears throat> we'll mention that uh, our other commissioner, Craig, uh, Lynn Peterson is uh, is not with us today. Uh, he, he had planned a vacation time before he got elected, so he uh, was kind of committed today to go. How often do these come back for, from like tax or 205, Barb? Not very often. Okay. I've just, yeah. It's usually just a clean up oh, okay. thing that they have to do okay. to get it off of the books. books. We got one minute. Yeah, <laughs> we got the resolution here in front of us. Yeah, we've done some fireworks there. Yeah, yeah I got the resolutions for the. We have to read that one. If you're not aware, we, we do videotape our meetings, and uh, if you're really curious, you, you can go to our website and and uh, and actually view any of our business meetings. Uh, we've been doing that for over a year, yeah. and uh, but anyway, I just wanted to mention them too. But uh, when we get into the hearing, you know. We, we do want you to comment, so I would. I would. Well, I you would have told me that when I would have fixed my hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is 11.15, so I'll call the, uh, the uh, public hearing for road vacating uh, in Holland Township to order, and uh, maybe... Craig, it might be good to go ahead and read Real that. Thing. Okay. I think it might be good. Do we have a resolution number for this? Yes, it'd be uh, 06, 06 13, 13. 13. Yeah. Okay. Uh, resolution vacating roadway. The above entitled matter comes before the Board of County Commissioners of Dixon County, Kansas, on the petition for vacation of a certain roadway laying in Holland Township, the same being 100th Avenue, Starting at the east right of way, Solomon Road, east approximately 8,040 feet, ending at the west right of way of Bay Road in Dixon County. Whereupon, the Board of County Commissioners, having heard testimony and receiving the petition and other papers filed herein, find that legal notice has been given by publication as required by law and that a, that, and that a public hearing was held which at which time concerned persons had the opportunity to speak on this issue. Further, that the public will suffer no loss or inconvenience as a result of the action and that in consideration of the petition that has been filed by the Holland Township Board that an order be granted pursuant of KSA 68-102. It is hereby, it is Therefore, ordered by the Board of County Commissioners of Dixon County, Kansas, that the following prescribed roadway be vacated to wit. 100th Avenue, starting at the east right of way of Solomon Road, east approximately 8,040 feet, ending at the west right of way of Bay Road. All easements and egresses and ingresses and egresses for utilities that are present shall be preserved. Wherefore, the petitioners has requested that the matter be set for hearing and upon concluding and of said hearing that this matter shall be re a resolution be passed vacating a, the above described section of 100th Avenue in Holland Township, Dixon County, Kansas. Therefore, it is her hereby ordered that the Board of County Commissioners of Dixon County, Kansas, that the above section of roadway be vacated 
and any easements for public utilities or facilities in said, road, said roadways shall remain for their present uses. Passed on this 13th day of June, 2013. Are these duplicate copies or there's two? They're two different. There's two different, two different ones. Resolution. Yeah. yeah, one's for 400 Avenue, one's for 100 Avenue. So we need to take those separately. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Because there'll be different property owners. Yeah. And if I could, I'll kind of explain the. the okay. The, the, both of these come from Holland Township. We received petitions from them to consider this, uh, which brought, brought the <coughs> issue about. And uh, the area that I've shown here in question is. From where the cursor is at, east over to Bay Road. It's my understanding at this time there's there's not a road there, and, and there's never been a road there. And for that reason, it does sit on the Marion County line. For that reason, they've requested it be vacated. So uh, the other uh, address is 400 Avenue, starting at the east right of way of Solomon Road, east approximately 2632 feet, ending at the east end of the right of way. All easements. For egress, <coughs> egress, and egress, for utilities are, that are present shall be preserved. Uh, summary of it, is this? Uh, this is uh, this is a separate yeah. petition. It's a, Sep yes, yeah. it's, it's a different issue. issue. So, so I, I don't really. I would recommend probably do them separately. Yes, yeah. yeah. And go back and do the 400 Avenue. Maybe 400 first or 100 first. Or, well, the, one, the one we read first. We yeah, read. yeah, let's go ahead and do comments on that one. And, and this is on the line between Dixon and Marion County on that. Yeah. Now, now yeah. does Marion County have to do anything? Uh, they were sent notice as far as our vacate. I assume if they want to vacate, they have to be up to them. Right. right. Yeah. So. so it wouldn't happen unless both of us. Vacating. Well, you'll be vacating the road, yeah. but uh, um, if, uh, you're vacating the road. So if they decide they want to also vacate the road, and if that road is actually on the property line, county line, and half of that's in there, they would have to make yeah. that same decision. If it's on Dickinson County side, then, of course, you can vacate the road. So, I mean, they may choose to do the same action. They may choose to do nothing, but you've vacated the road if that's what you do. Okay. You people are more familiar with, with this location, so yeah, any... Our question is, is I suppose probably the only question that we have, is we own the property on the corner of Solomon and 100 on the north side of the road. Mm -hmm. And what our concerns are is that road is our only access to get back there to our fields. And what our question is, if they vacate it, does that mean we lose access? Because we have to have access. And, you know, it never is maintained. It never right. has been. Well, the, the, if I'm interpreting this right, all easements for egress and egress, ingress and egress shall be maintained. I mean, that's, am I right, Doug? I mean, there's... Yeah, the, yeah. the county's not okay. doing anything in regards to that. They're right. just vacating it as a yeah. roadway. You'll have, the, you'll have right away just like you had before. Okay. Well, my but question. That, that yeah. then give the guy on the south side of us to go ahead and farm that whole road like he's always did the 100 road past our property. He's farmed clear to the fence line. My um, understanding, technically, legally, that if we vacate it, then they own it right to the middle of the road. Yeah. Correct, yeah. And you yeah, can I do with it what you want. Yeah. yeah. You actually control it from yeah. that point forward. Okay. So, then, so then, does it, I mean, we're good neighbors. I mean, yeah. you know, that isn't a problem. But down the road, you don't know what kind right. of neighbors are going to be there. So does that mean if you vacate and they farm down the middle of the road, you know, at this point, Conley's and us have a good relationship, and we get back to back and forth to our, our fields just fine. But down the road, if that was to change, then what does that lead you to do? Come back to the commissioners and and... Then you have to, like, come out and inspect the fans. Ingress and egress would be solved by that one. I mean, they well, can't. No. There's, there's a couple of parts about that. Okay. So let me see if I can explain it. When the road is vacated, the property owners on each side of the road to the middle of the road own the property. 
Okay. And and then it is that the owner's uh, right to do what they want with it. If you have a written easement or ingress uh, into the property, and that's a recorded one, this is not vacating it. If you don't have any recorded one, the county's not doing anything other than vacating the road. Okay. They're just simply saying there will no longer be a road there. Okay. And now where that leaves you, that, that kind of depends on your own situation. Okay. But if you have historically the, uh, uh, used that for access to go into your field, you have remedies that may be available to you, but that's something entirely separate from what the county's doing. Yeah. The county just vacating it so it won't be a road anymore. Okay. And since the county doesn't need it as a road, then that property goes back to the to the two landowners. Yeah. Okay. But historically, though, since it's been used as access, which is better than the grass green bear, it that should continue on. It, it, it yeah, could continue legally. on, but right. but that's nothing that. County can, right, right, yeah, can guarantee right. That'd be anybody. civil. They're just saying it, that that would be logical that if you've used it, used it in the past, that there's a provision in the law that would still give you access to the property, and that depends on other circumstances. And that, if I if I don't if I understand correctly, the access to ingress and egress that we refer to has to do with utilities. So right. if there's a yes and no line or a gas line or something oh, that's there now, that oh, that in other words, it doesn't affect. I okay. Don't it affects anything but utilities, does it? Unless they have their own separate. Not unless they have a separate um, uh, executed agreement for ingress into the So if there's a phone line oh, okay. or something like that through there, it protects that. Okay. But, All right. Okay. Yeah. I, that's where I was confused. I thought since it was historically used for access, that. And, and you, it can be. That's yeah. just nothing the county is right, right. doing. Right, right. Yeah. That's I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be, can be. Right. It'd be. Easement by prescription, right? In the right. Situation, or easement by necessity. Yes. Yeah. Because you can't keep somebody out. So, right. So if you just have half a road, can you still get to your property? <laughs> I, I guess is my question. Not, not the big implements. Yeah. So, right. No. Yeah. And my question is that I understand budget. I'm in management. Firmly understand what you guys are doing, but how much money? As a little girl, I remember maybe a couple times you guys came through and went through where the where the um, the little creek runs through and cleaned that stuff away so we could get through. But my, I guess my question is, I'm trying to understand that has been pretty much no or very minimal. Like I said, I can remember one time where. Where is that going to save you money, and what's the legalities that that is the reason that you guys want to close this road? It's been fine for forty odd years. What what's the well, difference? Well, let's let's back up. It, it's not us doing this. I we, we, we were requested by yeah. Holland Township to do that, and so that's why we're having this hearing today. And I don't know. Holland Township is not represented here today, so I don't know what what. Is it because they don't want to have the liability of that road, or what? I don't know that it's as much liability. I think in many of these situations, the issue is more when it's a public road and you get rain, especially in the north part of our county. You get the kids and different people going out tearing up the roads with their yeah. four wheelers and things. And by vacating that, that allows you guys to have total control of that. Yeah. You can fence it off, gate it at the end, yeah. and things like that. And, eliminates a lot of those problems. I mean, that's one thing that comes to mind. So, uh, I guess the bottom line is, is it's not necessarily needed for a public road, but it is an issue if you can't, if half the road doesn't, you know, like you said, in the future, if you have a relationship that's less than stellar with the adjacent property owner, uh, it may not be in the best interest to vacate it if you can't get down it on your side of the property line. Yeah. You know. I, I don't know why, I, I haven't been on the road, so I don't know how wide it is, but yeah. hypothetically, if but, you didn't uh, go along with the south property owner and you just had from the middle of the road on your property to get down to where you need to, would you be able to do that? No. Yeah. And then you have, you know, you're up there at Elm Springs pastures, those great big pastures, you know, and my question is, how are the, those old boys going to be able to get 
in and out of there to do what they need to do with their cattle in the spring and the fall. <coughs> and if somebody box the system, you know, like we're talking, we're talking now. Right now, there is no box. We're, the double line here is what we're talking about vacating. Am I correct there? From here over to here. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, yeah. over to here to Bay River. Three mile. Well, and there's a, actually not. It's a mile and a half, I think, in it roughly. Yeah. 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 And That's actually, there's no roads pretty much beyond that, right where your cursor right is, there. just about right there. There is no roads. I mean, we just all get along. But there is a travelable path or, or path. From or, your cursor to the uh, Solomon the road. road, there is a travel, you know, a cow path road. <laughs> that gives them guys access to those um, pastures and then with our implements to go where we need to go. Well, like I said, I, I wish there was a representative from Holland Township here because... Yeah, I, I was hoping there would be. Because, you down, know, but uh, the... It, we do have some places where there's absolutely no reason, or there never was a road there that we have. Yeah, well, like, like where the cursor it, it is does. West, isn't if it? you attach that to the person's ground, it it does get property taxed. Yeah. Otherwise, it's sitting there and not getting any property. I don't know if that's the reason, or, or whether they got a liability that they don't. Feel that they want to ever maintain well, that if road. If they vacate or, that road, then our property tax should go down because they vacated that road. Is that what you're saying? No, it'll go up. <laughs> yeah, it'll go up. Oh, you, you actually gain land. Yeah, right now you don't own that land, but but when we vac if it's vacated, you will own the ground in the center of that road or wherever that is. So you actually gain an acre, or a couple acres, or whatever. But. It, it does give you the advantage, I guess, of putting up a gate there at the end of that road if you've got people that you feel like don't, that you don't want them to go down there. But I, I would be concerned, given what you're saying, yeah. that if this is the only access to get them into this portion of their pastures back here, in this situation, this may not be in the best interest to vacate that road. Well, that's kind of what I'm looking at, too. Well, you know, because that when you go down 100 Road, there's that pasture gate right there by our fence, or by our field, that goes into that pasture. And see if you go down, if Solomon Road continued south, there's a pasture that cuts that pasture off. And so in my thinking, and I don't even know who owns them pastures. Oh, you mean the one in Marion County? Yeah, there would be no access. It used to be the Christiansons, and I think you probably may at least heard of Elm Springs. I've been to Elm Springs. Yeah, I, you know, you get back in there, and they all work together to get all of them cattle in them different uh, yeah. pastures, other than you could go in possibly over by on the west side of Palmer's, which... Palmer Base, which I don't know what that road is called legally, but I mean there's pastures upon pastures, and that's like one of the only accesses for these guys to get their cattle in there. See, I I have no idea. I know this came up at our township meeting, and, and yeah, that's the only way like they can get to Elm Springs, except maybe Palmer's, and I don't know what that road's like no more. And that's that's the whole purpose for having a public hearing is to when you know determine these things right. and make, make sure that it's in the best interest or not in the best interest. So yeah, I wish New Holland was or Holland was here. Well, like I say, that they requested it, and, and we've got some other townships that have requested this now, and it's like I say. Uh, I don't know their reasoning. That now there are situations where we have a situation like in Elmo where it was platted out for streets to go here and here, and then there was developed, and so that those still are just sitting there. Well, some of those landowners say, "Well, that's 
never a street and it never has been, you know, I, I'd just like to have my property extend on over there. Yeah. But, you know, I could see them where there's never been a road in 44 years beyond what's there now. Yeah, what's there now, which, I mean, I could see that part closing because none of us have ever had to deal with that. Yeah. But you get further in, you know, that could be, that could be rough. And then my question is, if you're going to add an extra acre to me, <laughs> Well, and I've got to give the right well, away, and I, I'm not going to. Well, we're just no, no. And I'm just saying, I don't think in township roads you own the middle of the road, no matter what. You got to vacate, and you still pay to the middle of the road, right, Doug? In township roads, uh, your legal description, yeah. Yeah. Is it including all of that, yeah, less public right away. Yeah, but I mean, in other words, you're not paying taxes for that 40 foot you've got to the middle of the road. Well, Barbara, yeah. do you know the answer to that? I'm not. Yeah, I, don't, I, I mean, I, know, I didn't think I don't know how the legal descriptions are because set up it's like on county roads when you, the county buys it from you, you take that off. But I thought well, maybe town, township I roads, think, you still yeah. paid to the middle of the road where the right of way was, and all you do is have an easement there for public transportation. And I, that and that's been be. 40 years I mean, ago that I went to that right. class. I mean, that's but, fine. I understand. But, yeah, but, but let me, let me, there you go. Let me, okay. My suggestion is here, <clears throat> since we don't have enough information, I don't want to make a decision. Well, so, I don't either. So, I mean, well, it I, seemed like it should have been mandatory for one person well, to show up from yeah. the township since they want to vacate right. where they are. Sure. Yeah. Well, we don't know the reason why they yeah. even ask us to do yeah. it. And, you know, if they were here, maybe they could explain. Right. And that's... But they're not here. Right. So, I mean, so we're just rehashing what we've talked about. So, I, I mean, right. yeah. so... Yeah, and, Given, given the information yeah. they've said about having access, I personally would not feel comfortable right. recommending that you, you pass this particular one. Because once we give up that right of right. getting it back, it's going yeah. to be very yeah. difficult. So. See, that's what my concern yeah. is. Right. Because, you know, it may be all well, I'm fine today, but Gilbert and I don't have all that much longer to be well, here. <laughs> you know, I hope. And, that and it's you, true, and the, the next neighbor might not be as friendly. Yeah. Exactly. You might not get along. Yeah. Because you may not want to put your fence out in the right away and, and give yourself, I mean, you could devalue the price of your property, value your property. Uh, what do we need to do to... You just want to take any action? No, I'm moving to... That one right there. Yeah. Yep. So if it's not broke, we're not going to fix it today? That's basically yep. yep. the yeah. I'll be happy. So, so you'll contact us again? Well, we'll see if Holland no. Township wants to bring it. Well, the Holland Township requests us to look at it again. The, if they don't request us to look at it again, we won't look at it again. So it would just stay like it is? Right. Yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> years down the road, they could sell that property, and if that guy owns half of the road, he could put a fence up right, right down the middle of the road. Yes, he could. And then you yeah. could never get back yeah. that property. Right. That would really be bad. Let's move on to the next one. Yep. Okay, uh, we don't have nothing to do with that one, so it's All right. easy for you. <laughs> Part of the rules are you have to stay with the whole thing. Especially getting early. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, it's basically the same thing with a different legal description. Yeah. And I've got it after, I believe it's from Solomon Road over. To where my curse is at. Yeah, 400 at. Avenue starting at the east right away of Solomon Road. It'd only be, be less, it'd be about half a mile. Right. Yeah. It's just gonna yeah, 2,632 feet. Is this one yours, Dwayne? No, no. I went through this a couple years ago. This I'm just listening. Yeah, that's, that's the well, section right there. <laughs> so, so we have no information on this either then? Oh, approximately half mile. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I know, I know. But the, the reason for vacating it. The only thing I can say with this, the same party owns both sides of the road. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. They do. Teals, Teals own both sides. So, well, from access to the other property owner. From, from, from this point here, it looks like there's nothing there. Te yeah. Teals own the north side. Teals own the south side. So. Uh, the way I look at the books, 
so the other, the first one you discussed, you had several right. parties involved, right. but yeah. this one. The property owners are both on the same side. The property yeah. owner owns both sides, so. And, and this one, it basically goes from a, the gravel road, and that appears to be just a path of some type that's gone in there probably for the property yeah. owner and never ever went any farther yeah. because to the east there's no right away. So it looks like the waterway is pretty well worked out to, you know, down that way. See, I think at the end of that tree line just north is yeah. where a set of buildings used to be at one time. Yeah, right up in there. So, and that might have been why the right away was there at that time yeah. or something. So. But you don't think anybody's using that access to get on back past that half mile line? Oh, they come in from a different way? Yeah, they would come in from the... Who, who owns the property? Can you yeah. pull up who owns the property on the next? On the other side of the section. That comes See, in. they've got a barn road to get into these yeah. sections. So okay. That's, that's where they... Because that's a barn road, a gravel road, so they're <laughs> not getting into their pastures. Yeah, they've got... That road. That's the cemetery. It's right there just down south. The Crowther and... Carver, whoever that right. James Carver. But they've got access off of right. a good gravel barn road to these, so. Right. With that access, I'm sure they wouldn't come in off there. It doesn't appear that there's any tributary or anything that would separate it to where they couldn't get across. I really don't think they come in from west. I really don't think so. Yeah. And they were all set notice that if they had any issues, so. Well, I was sending send a notice, and I didn't even know where it was at. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the gallery. I mean, we go by a radius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The gal yesterday that lived in California that I talked right. to was kind of the same place. So. Well, what do you think on this one, Craig? Uh, since this person owns the park, property on both sides, I'd say close the hearing. And move on and we pass this one. That's fine. Uh, would you check again to make sure it's the same yeah. teal? On the north and south? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, there are different. Uh, Thurston. Is it Thurston? Gibson Road. 464 Solomon. Gibson. And down here you've got. Yep. Yep, the same person. Same. Okay. Well, I know Thurston. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, uh, I move that we close the hearing then, Barb, at uh, 1141 and back into general session or open a regular meeting. And, uh, okay, uh, I move that we uh, approve the application for the Vacating the portion of 400 Avenue between Solomon Road and Barn Road. Second. We move to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Yes. Help along if you take a look at the roadway area. I I think the right of way is, uh, of course, part of their legal description, and so I think it's already on the tax roll. Yeah, I saw. And of course, the township or county is going to own the county roads, but uh, as those are vacated, that's going to go back and then be added to the tax roll. Oh, okay. With the additional legal, but the right of way is just just like it sounds, hasn't changed ownership. Yeah. Do you think it will add to their tax then? If you vacate a road, the additional the additional land will be added to each property. Yeah, owner. yeah. You you own the middle of the road, but you're not paying taxes on that the, the right of way that's there. Like say you got a 60 foot right of way, yeah. and you're 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 half the middle of the road. You're not paying for 30 foot for half a mile, but you're but if there's an easement through there. Is that correct? Well, no. The no. Road, okay. The road may be owned by the county. No, but I'm okay. I'm talking Township Road here, Doug. Okay. Okay, we've got Township Road 60 foot wide. Right. My property marker goes out to the middle of that road. Okay. Am I paying taxes on that 30 foot for half a mile, or is that, am I giving those taxes up? Am I, or is the county giving those taxes up? 
Well, the only thing I can do is give a good, my good <laughs> best guess is you're probably paying taxes on it. That's what, that's what I, I, like I said, Wilford Pine had, and that's been, we didn't discuss it that well, much. My understanding is that the ownership goes to the middle of the road. Right. The deed says uh, less public right of way. Right. But to, when the register of deed, or not the, the appraiser's office goes out, they measure the square footage of the usable portion, and that's what you're taxed on. Okay. Now, in this case, if you vacate, you're going to have another you're going to get 30 foot. feet or whatever yeah. that's going to be added to it, which will be a usable portion. The taxes on that oh, yeah. is going to be a negligible right. amount. Right. We're probably talking single digits when it comes all down to it. But the, the important thing is they it becomes a control of the property owner now, not the government. But the township road is owned by the county. It's not owned by the township. Well, yeah, well, I, I mean, so, yeah. But... Well, see, I, what I'm when Rain Road was widened in '66, they took off. They came over. They took it all off the west side. Well, they got pretty close to where the house now is only like 10 foot from the county right of way and stuff. But they paid Dad for the you know the, the road, moved the fence over, and, and that. Mm -hmm. Now, I was on township board, and I always you know I'm getting in trouble for making assumptions. But you got you know there's 40. 50 and 60 foot right of ways at Township Roads. And the one that used, I can't remember which one used to be white. But, this, this but, the, the, but the landowner owned to the middle of the road. And I just assumed that you were still paying taxes on Township Road or County Road. They don't pay on the portion they can't use. Okay. I'm okay. not certain of that. Well, and I, we and this one's a 50 foot right of way, so there's 25 feet. Well, and I'll, I'll tell my Township board that because they're, they're, they're roading back and we moved our fence back now twice. <laughs> I want that take. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I will confirm that, but I'm sure yeah. they, they don't pay on the portion. Yeah. Use. Make make sure we make sure we sign the right one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good that you're going to be pulling the road off of those because yeah. it won't have that up if you get enough. Of that oh yeah, you own the property. Yeah, but I, you know, when you're getting the legal description for the, the, the road, yeah. the road title is actually transferring over. Yeah. I mean, oh. the county goes oh. to the county road. It's up, up there. Well, that that legal is. descriptions identified and separated away. Right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so on the deed on, on the person's deed? No. 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 Uh, you're just like you have a legal description yeah. for that piece of property right. now. That's that's <coughs> identified as a parcel of real estate that's owned by the county, isn't it? We have to change the numbers. Except it's vacated. Well, yeah, I understand that it's public yeah. right yeah. Okay. No, it But well, it's not appearing on the tax roll. No. But like, uh, no, if you well, go up like here and, and I click on that, it comes up empty because there's well, no legal description for it. Okay. Okay. Go over to Noble Township, so I'm more. Okay. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm only someone who's not good understanding what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> you're wondering whether you're paying attention. No, no, I, I, no, I take to make assumptions that, that you know what you think is correct, and and that not everything's set in, set in stone. I realize that. Well, I know. Um, when it, like my quarter section, it, when, it, when I get the tax notice, it, it says it's for 155 uh, what, uh, acres instead of 160. Uh, north of Chapman, two miles. Oops. My case is a little different on my road, but when they done this in like 1885, they split the section. It's not down the center line. It all come off our side. Really? So that's well, something you need to keep in mind. When well, you're closing roads, well, that's where, where the the center line is, which side of the road. Or, seven twelve, yeah, seven twelve three. You go up, and where the road go, or the, the property line goes through, there's no road through the half mile. It sets off forty foot where it goes to the west. Okay, okay, we're on rain seven. Up there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's You'll catch up with yeah, that. that's fine. Which side of the section? Right, right in here. Right. Yeah. See, when I when I read my legal description, it doesn't say anything less right away except for the county road out here on Rain Road. It doesn't, you know. On on most, I can't yeah. say all, but most uh, legal descriptions that we've dealt with. And the way it's been explained to me is they all at the end say less public, less any public right away. Yeah. 
Well, and these deeds are old. I mean, they, it's, it hadn't changed hands, and well, my brother and sister and I, but we never updated the legal description just because it never changed owners. And the reason they do that, from my understanding, is so that if the public right away changes, like in a vacate like this, you don't have to go back and change every deed. Yeah. It just, the deed is enlarged slightly because right. the public right away was, was changed, so. Okay, well, I'll take that into consideration. We can remove some of those trees. That's like a lot of evergreens. Okay. Well, Brad, I think we've gotten down to <laughs> okay. Go ahead and I did. I just want to let you know that I received a letter from Kate Gant that Tom Job has announced his retirement. He's the administrator for our insurance vendor mm -hmm. and he'll be uh, helping in the search process for the replacement administrator. And you've seen Tom Job has been a very positive for that organization and a tremendous asset for us. Uh, Dustin is back in Connecticut at a floodplain conference. I've talked to him numerous times this week on, on different issues such as the fireworks stuff. But he's uh, very impressed with what he's getting back there. And uh, this will be the, my understanding, is the final step to get him certified as a floodplain manager under the federal guidelines. That's going to be a tremendous asset for us. Uh, this week we've had a number of our staff involved in some updates and training on the uh, computer system. and. Uh, Specifically, they are implementing the, their new public works program and integrating in our public works highway department uh, program into into their system. We currently, and, and for the past year or two, we've used two separate programs because they did not have a, a public works program that we liked, and they've written one to, to I guess, to our request. And, and uh, so we're working with them to get that online and get the kinks worked out of it. The overlay project, which was uh, scheduled to start uh, actually next week, has been delayed. Right now they're looking at July 8th. Because of all the moisture we had, they hadn't been able to get some of the prep work done. The vendor has it. If the weather stays the way it is right now, that may move up a little bit between now and then, but uh, best, their best estimate will be July 8th. Uh, we got a letter last week from KDOT uh, regarding the bridge inspections and, and telling us, that, and I think we noted uh, before that our uh, bridge inspections were very good. We were below 5% on our overall bridges and problems. And uh, it also noted in the letter and, and gave uh, accolades to our uh, road and bridge department for maintaining those uh, to the standard that they are and being very proactive and staying on top of the problem. So. Um, question on that, Brad. I mean, I put down the note. I'd like to go through that scour report time in a work session. Okay. Yeah. I meant to bring that up, but I forgot. And uh, the norm uh, in the letter that said the normal for county is about a 15 percent uh, issue rate, and ours was 5 percent. So, and yeah. that was 5 percent. Several of those have been, since they did their assessments, been removed from the list because we've removed them. Or eliminated the problem. So, uh, the sheriff's department had reported that they are, were arranging an extradition from Colorado uh, with a private firm that was going to be a six hundred forty-four dollar cost from the uh, diversion fund for an inmate to bring them back here for court. Uh, earlier this week, the uh, bridge crews had replaced uh, or completed a project at twelve sixty-one twenty-eight hundred Avenue. And they moved over to 2200 Avenue and to replace some tubes. And Martin reported this morning they got that done. So uh, they continue to knock those off the, the list. Uh, John Goff is, has been working on an application to KDOT for that uh, high risk road roads project. We, as I told you two weeks ago, I believe we got any notice of that. Time frame and the window of opportunity for applications is very short, but uh, we were putting together an application for 1400 Avenue. We originally looked at doing signs. We decided to go ahead and do a safety edge project there, similar to Old 40, because as you know, between K15 and the bar, especially, that's, there's not any shoulder at all, uh, which makes that a pretty hazardous route. And we're going to break that into three segments, similar to what we did with Old 40, breaking it into two. So if the funding's not available, we don't get denied, but maybe we'll get a portion of it and follow up with 
it's kind of a good strategy to do, and it seems to have worked for us on this, yeah. this current project. So uh, we've got the uh, vendor or the uh, engineers working on that to get that put together and get it submitted in time to, to be considered. And hopefully, our level is that, that a 10 or 20 percent. That's a 90 percent. Uh, yeah, it's like we paid 10 percent yeah, match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 On, I get on the HR yeah, yeah, project. Yeah. So. I did get an email from Wally Wolfer this week. He expressed his appreciation for replacing the, the bridge up at KT and Air Road and also the fact that we put a passage around there for local traffic. And he'd been down with that and he, he gave the guys uh, credit for doing an excellent job and he wanted you guys to know that. So I'll pass that along to you. Uh, the fireworks permit issue, I've had three inquiries this week, and of course Doug has put together the uh, resolution to incorporate that application in with the, the uh, process. We'll discuss that in a little bit. We talked about Camp 911. Uh, John Goff had, had told you at the uh, department head meeting that the Smoky, Abilene Smoky Valley Railroad had received notification earlier this week from KDOT that they've been granted or awarded their grant request for their bridge abutment repair on the uh, bridge over the river there west of Enterprise. The total of that project is $543,250 with 80% uh, of that coming from their uh, federal project funding. The remaining 20% in the engineering costs will, will have to be uh, raised by the Smoky Valley Railroad. So, well, and, will, will we have to get together with them and work out some details on that? Well, there, we're there in the support capacity. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, Mary Jane Ord has a very good grasp of what needs to be done. They did the application, did an excellent job, obviously, and they know what they're working already, working with a contractor and an engineer to get the uh, uh, ball rolling on what it's going to take. And uh, she's commented a number of times that they need to get their uh, financial campaign rolling to come up with the money to do that. So. I think uh, basically our only role in it is what we've done so far, and then also paying the bills and right. uh, as, acting as a fiscal agent for them to be able to utilize these federal funds. So, of course, we stand ready to help them any way we can, but they've got a much better grasp of what's going to be required. I, I think they've got a good handle on it. So, I don't know that we're going to have to meet with them much to do anything, and, and, and we've offered our support and help. So. I've been very impressed with how well they've been able to do that on their own. So, uh, the other thing I was just going to ask, like we mentioned a while back about yeah, getting some pictures, it. and I'll get it. I'll get hold of them and get it done next week. Okay. Okay. I think Lynn had had his taken, and yeah. I don't remember Laverne whether you'd had one taken or not. To you got my picture on the wall. I don't know why you need to know. Yours, that's right. Yours already out there. But it wasn't the good. It wasn't. It wasn't the good paper, though. Yeah, I think yeah. we. Yeah, Lynn said. Yeah, Lynn, said, yeah, Lynn yeah. says it wasn't professionally <laughs> done. And I, we, it's not the quality. It's quality of paper. We want it to be there 200 years from now. So. Yeah. I I just thought it was plenty adequate. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's about all I had. We did have a, one of the ambulances that got backed into last week. It was at a. Actually, they were doing a demonstration somewhere and it says some turnaround back then and damaged the front bumper, so we were getting uh, handed in the body shop getting it repaired. So, but uh, that's all I had. So, on the, uh, I guess on the RAPS agreement, that is uh, the final uh, agreement between us and KDHE for the award that we were given. And I told you a couple weeks ago we received that grant, so. When you get to that on the agenda, that's uh, that's just the final agreement we need to sign to be able to get that money. So. Okay. Doug, did you have anything for us? No. no okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, notice of some communications. Uh, We don't often get thank you letters, but we, we did get a thank you letter from Robert Roskins from Chapman. Uh, Craig had he had talked to Craig about the uh, repair a hole in the bridge, and he said that it was taken care of immediately, and just wanted to 
Express, excuse me. Yeah, it was off Quail Road and, and uh, yeah. Old 40. It was, the, the drop off was pretty good. I mean, it was, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, appreciate it. And I said, well, we want to thank, send a letter so we don't have to send down the bridge, road and bridge. And yeah, he said, he said to, yeah. he wanted to make sure it got passed on to the yeah. road and bridge department so that they did a good job of fixing that. Uh, this is an invitation uh, when the Memorial Hospital on uh, they're inviting us to attend the Moore Hospital River ribbon cutting and celebration on Saturday, June the 29th at 9 a.m. Uh, there at the front canopy of the hospital. And it says guided tours of the new facility will be provided following the ceremony. And, uh, refreshments available in the lobby. So we can put that down on our calendar. Huh? Will you both go? Well, I won't be going. No. That depends whether I'm right in the middle of harvest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I said I can't make a commitment yet on it. We had two invitations here from Fort Riley. Do you have those in your Yes, I have. <coughs> Here's a good one. We might want to at the yeah. NACO, at the NACO conference, uh, Trans Canadian Pipeline invited us to there. Uh, well, just what all are they going to do? Order? Yeah, it's. Uh, I won't be attending that either. Laura. No, I won't. <laughs> it, it, the NACO conference is where at this Fort year? Worth. Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Yeah. Yeah, that's yes. It says yeah. forward. And this, you alluded to this earlier. K Camp, uh, he just was in, also informing us, uh, Tom Job, that uh, that he was retiring. And uh, I might mention that over the 14 years that that he had uh, been ahead of that, uh, he went from. 33 counties participating to 59 counties now and 11 other county agencies and the fund balance increased from 600,000 to 13 million so that is quite an impressive uh, he does say that he is looking for a fishing rod so <laughs> okay takes care of the mail oh Okay, we have introduction and considerations of resolutions, <laughs> and we have this fireworks resolution, which we uh, are now going to allow people to sell fireworks in the county. And this following, uh, we have to approve this application that they would have to. Abide by, yes. Yeah. Uh, probably need to read that one too, Craig. Well, you want to. Oh, I don't have that. You don't have that? No. no. Uh, resolution, well, I'll go ahead. Resolution adopting application for retail sale of fireworks within Dixon County. Whereas, the Board of County Commissioners of Dixon County, Kansas, previously adopted resolution 042513 relating to the use, possession, and sale of fireworks in Dixon County. Be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Dixon County, Kansas, the application for retail sale of fireworks within the Dixon County, Kansas are attached hereon and incorporated herein and adopted by the Board of County Commissioners of Dixon County, Kansas, effective immediately, authorizing the retail sale of fireworks within the county pursuant to the terms and conditions set forth in the application for the permit for retail sales of fireworks as set forth in resolution 042513 
and upon the approval of the applicant application for permit for retail sale of fireworks. The Board of County Commissioners of Dixon County, Kansas does hereby adopt and approve the attached application for retail sale of fireworks to authorize successful applicants, applicants the permit sell fireworks at a retail within at retail within the jurisdiction of Dixon County as administered by the Board of Dixon County Commissioners. It is hereby adopted by the Board of County Commissioners on the 13th day of June 2013. Okay. Uh, is there anything else we need to do? I think just that? establish the fee, the non-refundable fee right. that would uh, go along with that application permit, and then uh, yeah. pass the resolution. Okay. I I move that we approve resolution. 061313-A uh, and that we uh, have a application fee of $300 for uh, retail sale of fireworks for the application but also no fee for for certain nonprofit organizations is that correct non-refundable non and, and it, the application fee would be non-refundable if they did not follow uh, the guidelines of the application so moved okay, it's been moved and seconded all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried We had given permission for one non-profit organization to sell fireworks, and then we got myself in the thing that we had not set up guidelines for people that want to retail fireworks sales. So this pretty much will cover the ones that are wanting to retail. Sure, and it is an application. The application for this year has a, a date on it of June 19th is the deadline. Uh, next year we'll probably establish that a little bit sooner when we have some more time. Yeah. <clears throat> Craig needs to sign it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Second page. Oh, I didn't. Well, I didn't sign the second page either. <laughs> no, okay. you didn't. No, I signed the yeah, front page. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we, we did have some requests, so now they know how to proceed. Uh, we have the review and consider approval for the RAPS agreement for 2014 grant period. And that's the final agreement with KDAG to uh, secure our RAPS grant. That's a 50000 year. The total grant, I believe, is 49000 Oh, okay, yeah, so. right. Of our participation in that is in mm -hmm. what she does, the water water. Yes. Yeah. The total amount of right. the grant was $49,940. Yeah. And uh, like I say, uh, and you've already approved the grant because that's what right. applied for yeah. it, just a matter of signing the final yeah. okay. agreement. And I think the two copies on the top, Vern, are signatures for you, and then the uh, one below, below that just initialed the. Uh, policy page that says we're going to use it the way that we applied for. Okay. I move that we approve this uh, RAPS agreement. Second. 2014. Second. Move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.
I did attend some of their meetings, and uh, they this past year they did do several projects. That, uh, so they are, like I say. Thank you. Many more projects are requested than there is. Yeah, but, but they did. They did pick out uh, almost a dozen projects that they help fund. Okay. Is that it, Brad? Uh, I believe that's it. I move we adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried.